Hello, I'm Odin, and this week there's a brand new Marvel movie, which means I get to make a brand new Marvel prop. I'm gonna make Gore the God Killer's Necro Sword. So the week I'm putting this video out is actually the release week of the new Thor movie, Thor Love and Thunder. The first part four movie, part four standalone movie for any of the Marvel heroes. I'm actually quite happy and excited that it's Thor. Now, I haven't seen the movie yet as I make this video, and even as possibly while you're watching it, I haven't seen the movie yet. So no spoilers, no worries. We know there's a bad guy, we know he's got a weapon, and I'm gonna make the weapon. Getting details for this was not easy. There's very little information online right now. I've got frames that I've taken from the trailer, and that's primarily what I've got to go on. There's some detail clues that I can find with the toys, but um, the toys are always simplified, and of course they may not reflect what's actually on screen, as I learned with Stormbreaker with Infinity War. But uh, that's okay. I'm gonna go on what I've got, and I'm gonna make the, the God Killer sword, the Necro sword. I've got a full-size plan of what I wanna do with the sword. And the plans were made in Inkscape, tracing the outlines of the sword that I could see from the still frame. I print my pattern onto paper using the poster printing setting in Adobe Acrobat Reader. This prints out large scale artwork onto multiple sheets of normal paper. Then I just need to line up the parts and tape the sheets together. The scale that I'm using is a guess, so it's just over four feet long, because that feels about right. I cut the blade out of my pattern and notch the ends for the center line. I trace two copies onto a big sheet of six millimeter what the foam, and then I can add the center line from the notched ends. To cut the center line V groove, I chuck a number 125 high speed cutter bit into my rotary cutter, and I make sure the cutting depth is less than six millimeter. And then carefully cut the V grooves into the foam on the center line in each of the blades. Make sure to remove the fuzzy leftover bits from inside of the V-grooves, and then cut out both halves of the blade. The V-grooves were both cut and cleaned, so now I can glue them shut with two coats of contact cement. After the contact cement is dry, it becomes sticky, and by gluing the V-groove shut, I make a peak down the center of each half of the blade. Next, I want to start prepping the blade parts to be glued together. I have a half inch handheld belt sander that I use to flatten the inside corners of the blade, which gets me the look of a sharper blade edge. Clean up all the dust, more contact cement is applied, and I use paper to separate the halves as I stick them together. I have more control this way. It keeps the foam from sticking together incorrectly before I'm ready to match up the sides of the blade. And once the blade parts are together, I can pinch the edges shut. Keeping the edges straight and flat is not easy to do, but I'm pretty happy with how this blade is turning out. Foam blades need some sort of stiff core to help them stay straight. One thing I like to use as a core are graphite golf clubs, but this club is not long enough and it might be too thick at the grip end. So for this build, I'm gonna use some graphite tubes that can be glued together to make a longer and stronger tube. And now that I'm ready to glue the tube in, I decide to add a third tube for some extra strength, which also makes the tubes a snug fit inside of the blade. I'm gonna use Gorilla Glue to secure the graphite tubes inside the hollow foam blade, and I twist the tubes as I stick them down into place. This helps spread the glue out inside of the blade. That's actually pretty straight. That's actually really, for a, for a foam blade, that's really straight. All right, that's, that's cool. All right, it's gonna take a couple of hours for the Gorilla Glue to kick off and actually foam up inside. That's why I got the rod wet to begin with, right? Because the, the water, the introduction of the moisture to the urethane glue, the Gorilla Glue causes it to foam up, which is what I really want it to do. So the Gorilla Glue will foam up inside here. It'll probably, Ew, I touched it. It'll probably come out the, the back a little bit and we'll have to cut it off, that's okay. Uh, but I can set this aside and let it start to set up and I can start making the hilt. Nearly all the pieces for the hilt I had already planned and laid out in Inkscape. 
so it was easy to bring the artwork into Lightburn and start cutting my pieces. These arcs are cut to be the different cone shapes that I need for the hilt. And being able to start assembling pieces of the project while other details are being cut out is really nice. I had a lot of the sub-assemblies completed before all the cross guard was cut out. And I'm already wearing safety glasses, so it's pretty easy to round off all the edges on all the parts as well. For the cross guard, I wanted a four millimeter piece to wrap around the stack of six millimeter cutouts. And for the corners, I added many layers of etching cuts to make a mitered cut so I could wrap around that corner over the stacked foam. When the laser is etching all of these rectangles, each new box is etched inside of the previous box, making that new one slightly deeper. It took a couple of test pieces to figure out just how much I needed to etch away and how much untouched foam I needed between each bend. Once I had it figured out, I could cut out two identical strips, which would wrap from the blade, around the cross guard points, and back across the bottom to meet at the handle. I just needed six layers of six millimeter what the foam. I glue all the layers together, and I leave an opening for the PVC pipe grip to fit into. In the end, I have two full layers of cross guard that fit over four more partial layers in order to leave that opening space for the PVC pipe. And it's also a good size fit to get around some of the cone pieces that I've already got. I want to round over the edges of the cross guard trim to give it a more finished look. And then I can glue the four millimeter trim over the six millimeter stacks, lining up all the small corners first. And I get a very clean and easy to make cross guard. There are two two millimeter trim pieces that fit inside the cross guard, and they're kind of behind where the medallions will be. I test fit the pipe to the cross guard. Everything is fitting together the way I want it to. Now one of the cones is a little bigger on the inside, so I added a strip of two millimeter foam to the PVC pipe, and now it fits correctly. I have two rings that I want to test as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to test fit it, but there's a little drop of glue, so now it's stuck. Let go, 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 let go a little bit better. There we go. Lay the hilt down and mark where the medallions go. The two circular medallions fit on either side of the cross guard and cover over the seams on the trim. That fits where I wanted it to. Actually, that can go behind. That's great. That's great. All right. I need to do the grip, the actual grip part. That's the one piece I don't have cut out yet. I've got the rest. I got the, the pommel's gonna go down this way, right, with this, and then you got this piece that goes on, and then you got this piece that goes on, and then, and then this part goes on and it has to be cut. But uh, I need to figure out how long I want this to be. I compare the parts I have to the paper pattern that I made previously. Um, so I'm looking at 185, call it 190 millimeters, make it a little longer. And I believe I'm just using four mil to wrap it. Yeah, four mil and then the... Uh... I cut out a piece of four millimeter foam and wrap it around the half inch pipe. It bulks up the grip to be a better size. I super glue the next ring on after the grip and then the next cone piece. And I'm going to need to cut down the PVC pipe. Now, a pipe cutter is kind of overkill for a PVC pipe, but I get a really smooth cut on the end. And now I can glue the last cone to the hilt. Wow, we're almost there. We really are just almost there. I contact cement the cross guard to the blade. The PVC pipe is wider than the graphite rods, so I had to cut a series of six millimeter spacer rings. It was actually one of the first things that I cut out for the project, and now I can super glue a bunch of them onto the rod. And I cut enough that I could have a lot of them that fit between the rod and the PVC pipe, but I don't want to fill in all of the space because I plan to use more Gorilla Glue to bond the blade to the hilt. And I'm gonna be twisting it again to make sure to spread that honey thick glue all around the inside of the pipe. I really wanted to use a cat toy to fill the pommel and make it solid. I cut a little off of one end. There we go. Down to the blue line. That's the halfway point. That's where I want it to be. Okay. So the, the reason I want the cat toy, I mean, I'm putting a cat toy in here because I want a cat toy. Thank you, Jerry Can Props. Um, 
The reason I want a cat toy in here is the diameter of this piece is, the inside diameter of this piece is the diameter of the cat toy. The inside diameter of this dome piece is the diameter of the cat toy. So by having it be solid, it's just gonna be stronger. It's gonna be solid, right? That's, that, that's why. Seems pretty simple to me. Super glue the cat toy into place and apply contact cement to glue the pommel end onto the cat toy. Oh, I forgot to talk about the pommel end, didn't I? Well, I wanted all these seam lines, so I cut out six rounded triangles from six millimeter foam and etched more of those big miter cuts on the inside of each piece. Contact cement each of the sides together and made a hemisphere that fits right over the cat toy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I had also drilled a six millimeter hole through the cat toy so it would fit over the graphite rod. And now I get to install the piece permanently on the sword. It's fun trying to figure out different ways to make pommels. <laughs> With all the parts of the sword complete, I start to wrap the grip to protect it from paint. All right, I'm almost ready to put black plastic up on this. I'm almost ready to start painting it. What's sad, what's cool, what's sad is this is probably one of the better blades that I've done. I mean, the, the, the actual final super sharp edge still isn't, you know, metal perfect, but overall, that's, I'm really happy with this bend. I'm really happy with how small I got the edges to meet because I was able to use the uh, handheld belt sander. Well, you can, you, you can see in the movie and you can see on the toy that the blade is all beat up. So I need to put a bunch of nicks on it. I really don't want to do that. <laughs> but if I do, then these edges will be okay. At first, I was kind of gentle with the sander, afraid of taking off too much, but I figured out what I can do and how I could make the blade look used and battle-worn. And so I scar up the blade and the cross guard, and I really like it. After two to three coats of Plasti Dip, the blade is black and ready to paint. I mix up some Samurai Sword Plaid FX paints and then thin it almost 50-50 with window cleaner. I strain the paint, and now the sword can be airbrushed. Now here's a new person that's helping out with some of the builds. This is Shop Gremlin. Say hello, everyone. Shop Gremlin does not speak and wants to remain mostly off camera. So I just want to say thank you for your airbrush help. The sword was painted all one color. Now I want to add black shoe polish for some dark spots and weathering. I had sealed the acrylic paint with clear Plasti Dip first. Shoe polish can ruin the airbrush paint. And for a touch of highlights, I applied a very little amount of silver rub and buff paint onto the edges of the cuts and the dings and along the top ridge of the blade. The final part that I want is some leather for the grip. I dye a piece of old couch leather and then cut it down to the exact size that I need for gluing. And then I can use contact cement to glue the leather to the grip which completes my God Killer Necrosword. All the material I used for this video I already had in the shop. I put a part list in the description. I am super excited. There's a new Thor movie and I got new props that I can make. Thor Ragnarok was one of my favorite Marvel movies. It's probably my favorite Marvel movie. And so Thor 4 being a Thor movie, a Taika movie, I'm very excited to see it. I, I actually don't have super high expectations. I just want to be entertained and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to get that. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy Thor at least as much as I do, if not more. And I hope you enjoyed my build of Gore's Necro Sword. Um, using that handheld belt sander worked far better than I thought it would. That, 
That gets me excited for building other large swords, like I know somebody recently talked about the Excalibur from the Hellboy comic book. Um, yeah, I might I might make a few more swords this summer because this is this is really cool. Uh, of course, there's more Thor props I want to make, just like last summer when we had the new Loki television series. We got a new Thor movie, so next week's going to be something else Thor-related, probably mighty Thor-related. But I know there's going to be lots of different ways that you can make a god-killing necrosword, <laughs> but this is how Odin makes. Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make a I want to thank Tyler Commodal, Matt Lott, Advexen, and all of my Patreon supporters. Patreon members at the $5 and above level get access to my private Discord, which includes weekly games with me, property related chat, and early access to live streams. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. <laughs>